This video shows how to make a 4 inch barrel bag using vegetable tanned leather. The lid and handle are made separately and attached with Chicago screws and the lid is kept closed with a locking pull tab latch. The gussets or sides are wet molded and lined to make them very sturdy with the bag being built up around them. The bag rests on a molded foot and molded wear leather adds strength as well as decoration. The size of the bag is large enough to hold a battery pack, a few phones, eyeglasses and wallets. The weight of the bag empty is only 500 grams and as the bag is used, the high quality saddle leather will soften and develop a lovely patina over time. All leather products start out with a flat pattern because the height is flat, so the drawing program you use does not have to be complicated but it needs to be accurate. I started using a drafting table but adding and changing the line and shape details of a drawing are easier inside of a computer and you will need to adapt to the computer technology to take advantage of modern rendering and cutting tools like 3D printers or laser cutters. I always start with a quick sketch then draw the bag in one to one scale in AutoCAD because it is a program I am familiar with. The gussets are wet molded and made an eighth of an inch larger for the outside so the two pieces of molded leather fit together making the gusset very strong. The center where the D-ring will mount to is raised twice so the gusset will be very sturdy maintaining the round shape. The raised foot, keeper mount, decorative bumpers and using the 3-4 to four ounce vegetable tan leather on the inside liner add strength to the bag shape. I laser cut these molds from 1 quarter inch MDF and offset the negative from the positive a 16th of an inch for the leather to stretch into shape. The pattern is cut into an eighth of an inch acrylic for a sturdy cutout jig that is clamped over top of the leather and a sharp knife is dragged along the edge to make the part very exact. And since the pattern can be printed onto transparent laser printer film, the pattern can be easily transferred onto the leather in a very accurate way as well. The carving, tooling and coloring of the leather is the fun part, but before the pattern can be transferred with a stylus tool, the leather needs to be cased, which is to dampen it with water evenly and allow the leather to begin to dry for about 10 minutes. When the leather is firm but still malleable, it is ready to receive the pattern. The printer film or transparency can be cut to fit over top of the leather and can be taped down so it does not move, which makes easy work to trace along the lines and make an impression. All the details of the pattern need to be transferable or the carving and stamping becomes more complicated. After the pattern is traced, a swivel knife is used to carve the leather. Make sure your blade is sharp and insert the tip about halfway through the thickness of the leather. Then pull the knife in the direction you want it to go, turning the barrel of the knife so the blade follows the impression left by your stylus. Your top finger is used to apply even pressure and you want the angle of the knife to be perpendicular or as straight as possible. If the carving is at an angle, the tooling of the leather will be more complicated. For the borders, drag your finger along the edge of the leather and your work surface as a guide. Try to use fluid motion to complete each cut without stopping or your knife can get caught on the now sticky leather. After all the lines are carved, you want to start your tooling with a bevel stamp to make the border stand out. Using a hammer or maul, gently tap the top of the tool to make an impression along the edge. Then use background stamps to finish the pattern. I used a total of four stamps which I bought from Tandy Leather Supply. B2045 and B997 were used to bevel the edges and E294-03 and E294-04 were used to add background. Next use different colors of dye to finish the leather pattern and make your design stand out. After the leather has been carved and stamped, you should also allow the leather to dry out so it can accept the dye better. I like to use different colors of water solvent dyes and apply them with a small sponge or brush. These dyes spread as they are soaking into the leather so do not start right at the edge and slowly allow the dye to penetrate the area. The darker colors cover over the lighter colors so I start with the lightest colors first. After the rest of the leather pattern pieces are carved, tooled and dyed, the parts can be glued together and assembled into a bag. The lining is glued and sewn in, then the edges are trimmed and the exposed edges are finished with the edge paint. The lid and handle are made separately and attached to the body of the bag with Chicago screws after the body is sewn together, but the holes where the hinge will attach are punched first. Then the bag is test fit with the gussets in place and the top of the opening is glued and stitched together with a strip of leather. 
This is the area of the bag that will receive the most wear as phones and whatnot are retrieved from it, so the piece of leather should not be carved. To attach the gusset, rough up the surface and evenly apply glue. Make sure the D-ring is standing perpendicular with the foot of the bag and use small clips to line the edges up and apply pressure. When the glue is dry, make sure your stitching all is sharp and saddle stitch the gusset in place. Sewing multiple layers of leather together takes a lot of practice and a bit of patience. You do not want to rush this step and extra care is needed not to cut into the previous hole because more pressure is needed to go through the remaining three layers of saddle leather. I like to use John James number no. 4 harness needles and 0.6 millimeter reads a tiger thread and always have a scratch all handy to open up the hole a little bit if needed and a pair of pliers to pull the needle through if my fingers get tired or my fingers can't reach the needle in a tight spot. Stitching multiple layers like this also makes it easier to snag a thread. So before pulling the needle all the way through, make sure the thread is free and pull the thread tight. A loose thread crosses the hole making it easier to puncture. So pull the thread to the back of the hole and insert the harness needle at the top of the hole. Then pull in the opposite direction a smidge. If the needle is snagged, it'll be easy to see and feel as you are pulling on the thread. To assemble the handle, glue a one and a half inch circle liner where the attachment screw will be mounted for extra strength. Then glue the handle together using small clamps and when the glue dries, stitch the handle together. Then the attachment tabs for the handle are dyed and glued around a curve so they can be stitched into the bent shape. After they are stitched, the edges are finished and eyelets are set on both sides of the attachment tab so the handle moves freely allowing the lid to open without obstruction and makes the handle easy to remove so a shoulder strap can be used instead. To care for a saddle leather bag, you do not want to get the leather wet and you should apply leather conditioner as needed. This bag took me over 100 hours to complete from start to finish, not including drying times.